Welcome back to our third hour on the line with us is Alexis Baden Mayer, the uh, an attorney, political director of the Organic Consumers Association. Organicconsumers.org is the website. Uh, you can tweet her at Alexis Baden M A Y E or at Organic Consumer. Alexis, welcome to the program. Thanks so much, Tom. Great to be here with you. Great having you with us. So uh, this this whole you know what's for dinner? GMO pork, fish, or this is a, a great, great piece that you guys came up with. Tell us the story here. Well, there, where do I begin? There are so many nasty things about the factory farm industry. Um, I researched pork, and the first thing that came up was a Humane Society investigation that was looking, it, they were doing an undercover investigation in a hog farm, and they found that the piglets were being ground up and fed to the sows essentially fed to their own mothers and this this had a medical oh <laughs> yes yes but listen this was a medical necessity they had to do this because the pigs had gotten a virus and the cheapest and easiest way to inoculate the the sows against the virus was to feed them the ground up piglet intestines um, of course <laughs> No consumer is going to go, oh, sure, that makes sense. Right, <laughs> and, and boy, that's my bacon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it is, you know, it's disgusting and cruel, and who knows if it works as well as actually, you know, ridding the pigs of the virus in some medical way. But, of course, you know, the pigs get these terrible viruses because they're kept in way too close contact. They, they're crammed into metal cages together. For the, for the sows, they give birth multiple times throughout their short lives, and they're kept in cages where they can't um, move around at all. They can't even turn around. Um, and most pigs spend their time just gnawing on the bars of their cages. So it's, it's definitely a, a disgusting and cruel industry. And the, these are animals that have limbic brains just like we do, and uh, so experience uh, the, the same emotion, the same range of emotions that we do. Uh, unlike uh, birds, for example, and and uh, and most science seems to indicate that they're at least as smart and maybe smarter than your average dog. Yeah, they are the most intelligent of all domesticated animals. They have um, the perception of time, for instance. They can anticipate future events. I mean, that's that's uh, extreme cognitive ability, right. and they have they have strong um, emotional bonds with each other, and. So that's that's the other thing that you can imagine how uh, it's just unbelievably cruel. Mm. So, uh, what about the GMO piece of this? Well, most of the genetically modified crops that are grown in the United States today, you know, more than ninety percent of them, they end up being used to feed livestock. So, you know. I'm concerned about GMOs. I'm a vegetarian. I eat soy. Soy is genetically modified, but only a tiny fraction of genetically modified soy, just two percent, is used to feed humans. Most of it is used to feed animals, and that's one of the reasons why meat has such a huge carbon footprint and such a, a devastating effect on our environment because we're using most of our good farmland, almost all of our good farmland, to grow crops for animals. And the way we're doing it to increase yields is by pouring a lot of nitrogen fertilizers, synthetic nitrogen fertilizers, onto the land. We're, we're plowing. We're not keeping the land covered uh, between the growing seasons. So most of that, you know, along the, river, the Mississippi River Basin, for instance, most of that farmland is actually washing into the Mississippi River with all the farm chemicals going down into the Gulf of Mexico and creating a massive dead zone where no aquatic life can live. So we've, we've created a horrible environmental disaster, and it's primarily to feed animals in these torturous factory farms that produce food, you know, the, the meat that we eat is causing obesity, diabetes, heart disease, all of these diet-related diseases that half of American adults are struggling with now. So from, you know, whether it's animal welfare or human health or an environmental standpoint, it's absolutely clear that we need to do something different. Yeah, it really is. Um, and, and vegetarianism and veganism uh, in particular are, are great responses to this not only, and, and also make you much healthier. Speaking of factory farms, I don't think most people realize that the, uh, uh, the salmon that they're getting on their plate and a few other fish too, but I think salmon is the big one, 
uh, might not only be factory farmed, but might even be genetically modified. Yes, that's a very recent development. And um, right now it's a tiny percentage of the market, but we hear that fact or factory farmed and genetically modified salmon is currently being sold in Canada as a canned fish product. Um, but the plan is to massively scale up this production. And there are fish farms going online in the United States right now to grow genetically modified salmon for the U.S. market. Now, heroically, the Alaskan congressional de delegation, especially Lisa Murkowski, they have heroically stood against this because they are very worried about their, their natural salmon and the, you know, Environmentally, salmon are really struggling already, but that's still a very healthy food source. So if you buy um, Alaskan salmon or Pacific salmon that is wild caught, that is extremely healthy and actually very good for the environment, too, because it takes a lot of environmental protection to protect the salmon runs. So mm. it's, it's an environmental choice. It's a good health choice. But if you eat farm salmon, that salmon doesn't have the omega-3 content that is the good reason to eat salmon. Omega-3s are healthy fats that salmon have in, in high ratios, um, but farm salmon doesn't have that. And so essentially you're just getting, you know, a form of meat that doesn't have any particular health benefit. And it's, it's environmentally devastating, especially the, the fish farms that are in the ocean, because that can actually impact the wild salmon populations. Because just like we were talking about with pigs, they get these nasty viruses because they're kept in close quarters, shoved all together into factory farms. That's what they do in the, the ocean pens. So they, they cram a bunch of salmon in together. They feed them an unnatural diet. Um, they're feeding them genetically modified grains, just like we feed other animals. And they, the animals get sick. The salmon get sick. They get viruses. And then when they're kept in the ocean, those viruses can transmit to wild salmon. So we could have a collapse of the wild salmon population because of fish farming in the ocean. So as much as I hate the idea of anybody eating genetically modified salmon, because we know it has doesn't have the nutrition, it doesn't have the omega-3s. The FDA also found that it has higher levels of IGF-1, which is a growth hormone that uh, is correlated, levels of IGF-1 in human beings is correlated with certain cancers. So that's not good to have elevated IGF-1 levels in the salmon. Right. It's also more likely to cause an allergy. Um, so, so genetically modified salmon is, is not healthy, and I wouldn't recommend that anyone eat it. But so far, the requirement on GMO salmon has been to grow it in, in tanks on land. And that's not, that's not great to produce human food, but it's a little bit better for the environment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, like, it's hard to pick your poison here. But, um, but definitely the, the easy choice is wild Pacific salmon. Yeah, my understanding is that some of the fish farms here on the Pacific, in, in the Pacific, you know, I, I'm broadcasting from Portland today, mm -hmm. and uh, there are fish farms, I believe, off the coast of Oregon and Washington and California, and you know, giant, basically giant nets full of salmon that are, that are, or pens full of salmon that are in the ocean, but the salmon can't get out, and as a consequence of that, uh, they're getting uh, fish lice, and these, uh, which sounds particularly creepy. What do we know about that? Well, that's, that's a big problem, and that's the reason why we have to, like, if you're going to have any type of farmed fish, it has to be on land. If you put this into the ocean, then the, the wild salmon could, you know, we could actually have a collapse of the wild salmon population due to diseases that they catch from these farmed salmon. Wow. Uh, remarkable stuff. So what do we, uh, uh, to, to wrap this up, Alexis, we're talking with Alexis Baden-Mayer, the political director of the Organic Consumers Association, organicconsumers.org. What can, you know, obviously there are dietary choices. What else can we do to uh, push back against the GMO industry and the factory farming industries? Well, the most powerful thing that you can do is create a personal relationship with a farmer and buy food directly from them. And even though I've been a vegetarian since I was 16, and I, I you Me know. too. Oh, how about that? Literally. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Um, yeah, so we know that our diet has a tiny footprint. But what I'm coming to, to realize when I meet farmers, it, it actually is a, a very 
great way for a farmer to make a living to sell animal products, and they can do it in a way that's environmentally sustainable. Not even environmentally sustainable. It can be regenerative. It can be a form of farming that restores the soil, brings carbon to the soil, creates a, a you know creates soil that can filter water and make sure we have clean water. So especially grazing animals. Grazing animals can be wonderful tools for enhancing and restoring an environment. But, you know, keeping chickens even or even keeping pigs, that can be environmentally sustainable. You can feed them organically. If it's, if it's done right. Grown. Mm -hmm. If it's done right. Alexis, uh, forgive my interruption, but we're going to hit a break here and get, we're both going to get cut off. Alexis Baden-Mayer, uh, organicconsumers.org. Thank you, Alexis.